Why, hello again everybody. In this video, I'm gonna show you different selection techniques using pandas. In the previous lesson, we've loaded a CSV file. Here's what my data frame looks like. My data frame contains the original 150 Pokemon, all the way from Bulbasaur to Mewtwo. All right, so we have a data frame. To make a selection by column, I'll just have this as a comment, selection by column. What we'll do is print, access our data frame, use the subscript operator, then we will pass in a column name. We are going to pass in the name column. And here's what we have. As a single column, we have all the names, and this is actually a series. If you have a lot of data to print, the default behavior for pandas is to print the first five rows and the last five rows. What you see here is a truncated version. If you need to print the entire thing, follow this with the to string function. Do be careful if you have a lot of data you're working with. And here are the names of the original 150 Pokemon. Let's say we need the height, the height column. Well, I'm going to do a search for height. I will place that within the subscript operator. And here's the height of every Pokemon in meters, or the weight. We are searching for the column of weight. And here are all the weights. This one's heavy, whatever it is. I think that's Venusaur. 100 kilograms. Now to select multiple columns, we are going to print, access our data frame, then within the subscript operator, we'll pass in a Python list, a list of all the columns we would like to output. Let's output the name column, the height column, and the weight. We have three columns, the name, the height, and the weight. Then to display all the data, all the rows, you can follow this with the toString function to string and we get all the rows and these three specific columns name height weight all right that is selection by column now we'll make a selection by row or rows let's take a look at our data frame i'm going to print my data frame each of these rows has a label. The default behavior for pandas is to give each row a number for the label, starting with zero. They're in ascending order. Well, we can access the lock property, then pass in a label. So since I didn't set a label for each of these rows, zero would correspond with the first row, where we have Bulbasaur. One would be Ivysaur. But optionally, what you could do, I can set one of the columns to serve as the index so that you can access one of the names by label using the lock property. You're probably not gonna remember which Pokemon is 145, but you'll remember it by its name, so it's easier to look up. So what you could do is that when we read our CSV file, we can pass in a second argument, a keyword argument, index underscore col meaning column index column equals name then let's take a look at our data frame now we're setting the label of each row to be the pokemon's name we can do a search by name pretty easily so to set that up you just pass in a keyword argument of index column index call for short then set which column you would like to serve as the index so then when we access our data frame, we will access the lock property, meaning location by label. Then let's do a search for Pikachu. We'll pass in a string of Pikachu. And here's all the data for Pikachu. Pikachu is number 25. Type one is electric. Pikachu doesn't have a second type. That's NAN, not a number. The height of Pikachu is 0 0.4 meters, weight six kilograms. Pikachu is not a legendary Pokemon. Here you have the name and the data type of what Pikachu is. It's an object. All right, let's do a search for Charizard. Charizard. 
And here's Charizard. Charizard is number 6, type 1 is fire, type 2 is flying, height 1.7 meters, weight 90.5 kilograms, not legendary. If you don't want all the data when displaying your row, when locating by label, we could pass in a second argument. We could pass in a pipe on list of all the columns we would like to select. So with Charizard, I would just like the height and the weight. So we will pass in a Python list as the second argument that contains the columns we would like to display. There we go. With Charizard, we only have the height and the weight, those two columns. Now you also can select a range of rows as well. After the Pokemon's name, you're going to use the slice operator, which is a colon. Give me everything between Charizard and let's say Blastoise. Blastoise. There we go. We have Charizard, Squirtle, Wartortle, Blastoise. You can also use integer-based indexing if you so choose. We're going to print, access our data frame, access by integer location. Let's say you need the first 10. You would pass in those indices. 0, colon, 11. Remember that the second number is exclusive. You would then be given the first 10 rows between Bulbasaur and Metapod. Maybe you need every second row, then add a step of 2. Now we're given every second row. You can see that the number is going up by 2. As a second argument, you can select the indices of which columns you would like. I would like the first three columns, 0, colon, 3. With the range of 10 indices that I've selected, I specified I would only like the first three columns. Besides our index with all of our unique labels, we have the first three columns, each Pokemon's number in the Pokedex, their first type, and their second type if they have one. Alright, now we'll go over an exercise. We'll have a user type in the name of a Pokemon, and then do a search for it. We'll create a variable of Pokemon equals call the input function to ask for some user input, enter a Pokemon name. Using this technique, if the Pokemon's name doesn't exist, it's going to cause a key error. Using a try block, we will try and print, access our data frame, access the location property, then instead of placing a string here with the Pokemon's name, such as Pikachu, We'll place in the string variable of Pokemon. We'll do a search for whatever the user types in. Now, if that Pokemon doesn't exist, we will catch an exception if it happens. Accept key error, where we will print. I'll use an F string. We'll say that Pokemon's name, Pokemon not found. And now we can do a search for a Pokemon. Let's test it. Enter a Pokemon name. I'll type in Pikachu. Make sure that the first letter is capital. And here's the stats for Pikachu. Let's do a search for Snorlax. And here's the stats for Snorlax. What if there's a Pokemon that doesn't exist? Like, whatever that is. Well, this Pokemon was not found. I couldn't think of any homework for you to do, so let me know what your favorite non-coding hobby is. Post it down in the comment section. And that is selection using pandas.